Hey everybody, this is going to be part two of uh, the image um, previews. And this stuff's coming out in April. Some of this stuff's out already. This one I saw on the shelf. So I started getting this one, uh, Birthright, and it was very good. I read like the first 12, 13 issues, and I stopped reading and I get other stuff. But look at it, it's at issue 48 right now. And this is number 48, look at this. A really nice cover. You wanted to see what's going on with them. I see a lot of them at Half Price Books. I'm going to have to go pick them up so I can try to finish the story. And it's written by Joshua Williamson, artist Andre Bresson, Bresson and, and Andriana Lucas. Came out April 14th. Oh, that's already passed. That's last week. So this one's, um, since the war against Tyrannos ended, Brennan has been missing. Where has Earth's mightiest mage been? And what failure haunts his every waking moment? Only two issues left. Let's be going to issue 50 there. Okay. Bitter Root number 12. I haven't read this. I don't know if it's any good or not. Let me know. And I got a friend named David Walker. He makes his own films. Skywalker films. Pretty cool. Uh, out of Niles, Ohio. He's really nice. He's a really cool guy. I met him and a real good friend. He did comic book characters and I drew some of his characters for him and everything years ago. Okay. He had his friends with another guy, James Beaver. He was really cool. And he had it really, he's got a, um, I think he's still got a website, but I got to check that out and see what that is. But he did his artwork. He was really good. Let's see, um, artist Sanford Green comes out next week, this coming week. Uh, what's today? The 20, uh, no, the 19th. So this would be out next week. Yes. This is Legacy Part 2. Cullen and Ford are in a fight to stay alive while Ma Etta makes a decision that will impact the entire Sanger family. Meanwhile, Enoch makes an important discovery, but will, but will he live long enough to tell anyone? Okay, we shall see. Now we got Bliss 7 of 8. Here's the cover there. And Sean Lewis writing, Caitlin Yarsky doing the artwork that came out last week. Well, this came out last week. The penultimate issue. The lauded miniseries is near its completion. Leith, or Leith, battles to the end with Benton and Perry. While over the mountains, a new and final threat emerges, the townspeople and victims of Feral City. Let me know if that's any good. I've seen some at Half Price Books, and like I said, I've seen these before too. Commanders in Crisis, number 7 of 12. It's a very cool cover. Wow, battling. And you got a variant down here. That's cool. I like that. Okay, Steve Orlando. He's writing a lot of stuff. David uh, Tento is doing the uh, art on it. He got covers by a couple of people there. Cool. Superheroes. The American Individuality Act moves forward as the world looks on in envy. The loss of empathy has left few speed bumps on the road to worldwide chaos. Can the Crisis Command's Hail Mary revelation about the multiverse kickstart Earth's caring? And will Frontier escape the lightning world in time for it to matter? Hmm. Okay, now we got crossover number six. I've been trying to keep up with this, and I still have to read issue, the issues and everything. Like I said, I've been sticking with King and Black, but I've been putting these aside because I want to read them. Donny Cates is doing this one. He's writing a lot, too. Jeff Shaw, Dan, D. Cuniff, and John J. Hill are doing the art. Comes out next week. End of a story arc. Kids Love Chains, Part 6. The dome has been shattered. The world is burning. Everything has come undone. Do not miss the shocking conclusion to the blockbuster final chap chapter of Kids Love Chains. Alright. Deep Beyond, number 3 of 12. There's a cover there. That's cool. I like the colors and everything. And there's a variant down here. It's going to be black and white, I guess. With tones in it. Came out last week. So this is Paul and Jolene become a more close-knit team. And together they finally reach Pam's submarine. But sea monsters and the threats of the wilderness are not the only thing to be afraid of. On the surface world, politics and plots between cities start to unfurl and the consequences will fall on the unauthorized rescue expedition. Wow. Mirka and Dolfo 
and David Goy are doing the writing, and Andrea Ricardo is doing the art. Okay. Simon Bianchi's doing one, too. I want that Simon's right there. Let's see, what does that say? Cover B. Now, that's for Mirka and Dolfo's doing cover B. So he writes and draws, or she. I'm not sure. Cool. And we got Firepower by Kirkman and Samney. I read this one. Very good story. I love this story. So if you're not reading Firepower, it's really good. Okay, Chris Samney and Matt Wilson's doing the art. Came out last week. Yep. The tragic life of Owen Johnson becomes more tragic. Yeah. Ha Ha, number four of six. W. Maxwell Prince is doing the uh, writing. Patrick Horvath is doing the art. Comes out this week. In a couple of days, it'll be comic book day. Love comic book day. It is a variant right here. Wow, very detailed. Gustav in the world of floating objects. A wise clown once said that everything floats, and he was right. The comic book with a literally laughable title drifts into the big blue sky with an issue hand-painted by watercolorist Patrick Horvath. Okay. Homesick Pilots, number five. Dan Waters. Doing the writing in Casper. Wingard is doing the art. There's a nice cover there. That's cool. And I designed a character like that with one orb in the center. He's real bulky. I'll have to show it to you one day. Let's see. It's horror, action, and adventure. End of a story arc. The old James house turns on Amy. If she can't conquer her own demons, how can she expect to conquer those that haunt its hallways? Perhaps demons aren't for conquering. Perhaps we must fight alongside them. The house fist fights a monster is what we're getting at. Wow. In the end of our first story arc. Okay. Carmen number two. Cool cover. Let's see, we got uh, writer, artist, and cover, Gillum March. Comes out last week. I remember seeing that on the shelf, yes. In this, in this second issue, Kata, or Kata, explores her newfound ability to fly, landing at a plaza in Palma where real-life Cisco and Kata are having a conversation that plunges her further into the depths of despair. When an ever-cheeky Carmen pops in to intervene, she and Kata sit down for a philosophical heart-to-heart. -heart. All right. Now we got Moonshine, number 24. Brian Azzarello. Wow. That's scary. Yeah, the water Rizzo is doing the artwork. Comes out this week. The Well, part two. Love's own entrancing music lives again as an old flame re-enters Lou's life. And when the Holtz come to New York to free their patriarch from the, Joe the Boss's clutches, what will they ask of the ill-fated booze hound? Okay, now we got Nocterra number two. That came out. I picked this up. I've been trying to keep hold of this one. This just came out last week. Nice cover. Okay, Scott Snyder's doing it. Tony Daniel. And Tamu More is doing the art. You see, we got uh, that action adventure supernatural horror. Full Throttle Dark, Part 2. Val brings her passengers to the first truck stop, the Neon Grove. But with her brother getting worse by the minute and dark forces in hot pursuit, our ferryman finds herself faced with a grave decision. Ooh. Then we got Nomen Omen, number 14. Cool Dragon. Okay, then we got this one too. That's cool. Variant cover B. Okay. Let's see. As the world falls down, part four. The end is nigh. As G Jacopo Camagni and Marco B. Bucci's saga of magic storycraft gallops forward toward its epic finale, get ready for the most action filled issue yet. Survival is quite a big deal in the mean streets of Arcadia especially if you're just puny humans. But if you're, say, a, a, a bad and peed off witch, well, that's a completely different story. 
Cue the ride of the Valkyries and sit tight. There will be blood. Wow. Now we got Post Americana, number five of six. That's a cool cover, the woman in red. Steve Scrosi, he's doing the art and the cover and the writing with Dave Stewart. Cool. This comes out this week. Dystopian science fiction. Carolyn and Mike take a ride with Night Terror to the lost coast of California where Mike finally meets his secret ally, Marcy, in person. Everything she told him was a lie, and the truth is a death sentence for them and everyone else left on the planet. Wow. All right. And now we got Radiant Black. This is a good story. I'm liking this one. Kyle Higgins, really good writer. Marcelo and Costa is doing the art. And it's a really good story so far. I'm trying to pick, figure out what color, I, uh, what cover I would get. This comes out this week because you can pick it up from um, Midtown Comics if you wanted to get it early and save a little bit on tax and everything. They got a discount, 10% discount on their books and stuff. Okay, we got um, science fiction superheroes. Really good. I like it. This was a little bit more money, this cover here. But that's, that's really cool. Okay, that's it. Nathan's getting down to business today. He's finally working on his novel. All he needs is some solitary writing time, no helpful parents, no superhero social media, and definitely no alien voices beaming and an unintelligible language into his brain. That's not too much to ask for, uh, right? Yeah, not too much to ask for. Yeah. I know what it's like trying to sit down and write. I've, I've written stuff and before you just focus in and trying to get something done. If you, Sometimes it just comes real good and you're like blasting it out. And then other times you're like, I can't think of a thing. Well, the same thing with drawing too. You just Sometimes you can get it. Sometimes you're like, you're just put the paper down and walk away. That's a cool cover. Different. It's a robot type cat or something. What is that? It's different. Rain Like Hammers, it says, 4 or 5. Brandon Graham's doing writing, artist, and cover. It comes out this week, science fiction. Super, neuro, super criminal Brick Block plans to steal a high-ranking aristocrat's fingers and use them as keys to access, uh, to access, to access, to access, that's it, the palace world, world's deepest sublevels. Elsewhere, a detective working for the immortals and his sexy sex robot assistant are traveling across the solar solar system to investigate the strange happenings on Sky Cradle. Sci-fi finger butchery in full color. That's weird. Let me know if you're reading that. What is that about? It's weird. Okay, now we got Savage Dragon number 259. Wow, he's almost getting up to 300 issues. Enter North Force. Okay, Eric Larson is doing it all. Doing it all. Like always, he's he. I don't know. He gets everything. Wow, man. Writer, artist, and, and he's probably got obviously a guy probably got a letter and stuff like that. Let's see. Comes out last. That came out last week. Okay, a new force to to be reckoned with. The Canadian Super Team North Force is looking to recruit a new member to their team, Malcolm Dragon. All right. The Scumbag Number Seven. main cover and then we got a variant cover down here okay that came out last week moonflower part two the battle on the moon continues ernie gets separated from the rest of his crew and meets the leader of the evil moonflower cult will she convince him to help her with her nefarious plans with the promise of free sex and drugs probably oh man okay i gotta make sure the pages Okay, we got Shadecraft number two. I like this story so far as well. Here's a variant cover there, or the main cover there. This is April 28th. This comes out next week. Joe Henderson is doing the writing, Lee Garbett, and Antonio Fabella is doing the uh, art. Next week, let's see. As if surviving high school wasn't hard enough, now Zadie has to contend with killer shadow monsters too. On the upside, her own shadow has come to life and is determined to protect her. So that should even things out, right? Well, what is up? 
with the new school guidance counselor who seems to know a lot more than she lets on. It's cool to find out what who her shadow is as well. Or what her shadow is. Spawn, number 317. Okay, Todd's doing the writing. Carlo Barbari, or Barbari, is doing the art. Okay, we got a few different covers there too. Comes out next week on the 28th. Chain Gang, part four. The Chain Gang arrives. Spawn comes to terms with new allies as well as new threats. Spawn, she spawn, Reaper, Gunslinger, Redeemer. All right. Stray Dogs, number three. I like this story as well. And the cool covers. You got a variant down there. Comes out this week. Under the farmhouse, something rots. And no matter how well they're trained, dogs will be dogs. Now they've uncovered something that just can't that just can't be buried again. Wow. Tony Flex and the artist Trish Forstner. Hmm. Now we got two moons. I picked up the first two issues of this one. I want to have to get reading it, see what it's about. Make sure. I think it's werewolves. Wow, that's pretty scary there. Main cover, and here's a variant cover down here. Wow. This comes out next week. John Arcardi. Arcudi. He's doing the uh, writing. Valerio and Gian Giordano is doing the art. Okay, and then we got Horror Western, The Iron Noose, Part 3. While Virgil was stuck riding with the band of bloodthirsty Confederate guerrillas that saved his life, Francis is faced with a deadly decision. All right, if you're reading it, you know who those characters are. Like I said, I have to get reading it so I know. Here's the last one on this story. This, this will be a shorter video. Ultra Mega by James Heron, number two. I bought the first one because I, I didn't realize how much it cost. And I looked at the, after I got it, I was like, wait a minute. I thought, I'm thinking it was like a regular comic book and it wasn't. It's thicker though, but it looks good. James Heron's doing the um, writing and the art with Dave Stewart. You see, it comes out this week. Rising out of the carnage of our debut issue, a new hero emerges to, to beat down the kaiju scum. Fists fly and blood is spilled. Fight monsters. Stand with humanity. Stand with the Ultra Mega. Cool. Now we got the last one here. I, I picked this one up. The Walking Dead Deluxe number 12. Robert Kirkman, you know. Charlie Adler, David Finch, Tony Moore. With David McCaig doing the um, inking on all of them. I always pick up the uh, the David Finch ones. Cool. Wow. Okay, the Green Family Farm was supposed to be the start of something new, or at least a place to end the survivors' petty squabbles. But no, it's never that simple. Now Rick has a gun to his head. This deluxe presentation in stunning full color also features another installment of Cutting Room Floor and creator commentary. That's very cool. All right, let me know what you're going to be getting. Like I said, I picked up The Walking Dead, and I like Shadecraft, Stray Dogs, Two Moons, um, Radiant Black, and what else? Noctera. I had, I had started reading this the first couple of issues, and I stopped, of um, Moonshine. Firepower, I'm picking up. Ha Ha. I wondered about Homesick Pilots, but I'm not sure. Carmen crossover i'm trying to keep up with that like i said the first six issues are at half price books of commanders in crisis i just looked at them again today i didn't have enough time to do a, a hunt video but i pop, popped up a, a few of them already so you, if you've seen them and birthright i, I, I want to finish reading that because it was a very good story but it's 50 issues i have to look at seeing if i can get the ones that are at half price books but let me know what you guys are going to be reading I mean, a lot of stuff there's a lot of great books out there's so much stuff and everything but thank you very much for watching guys um uh, and you guys have a great night, and Collector Dude is out.